work here at Marine Biology Students, and last summer we went to this island, which is located in Malaysia, and we did uh, a marine conservation sort of internship thing. Um, so this island is called Pulau Tenga, uh, it's on the east coast of Malaysia, and it's a private resort, so all of that side is the sort of private villas and the hotels, and then down here, this little clearing of the woods is where the volunteering branch is, and that's where all the research and things is carried out. Uh, I'll just tell you a little bit more about what it is. So, Tang Island Conservation is a very affordable and very practical conservation internship. Uh, it's on marine and terrestrial biology, so it's not just for marine biologists. Uh, and it's a good opportunity to get really hands-on experience in the conservation field, if that's something you're interested in. Um, there's lots of different aspects to the um, internship, but the project mainly focuses on sea turtle conservation, coral reef restoration, uh, a bit of sustainable living, uh, some trees and plants, planting and conservation there, and but like primarily focusing on a clean environment for the resort because that's part of the um, aim of the resort, but also for the environment around the area. You'll be involved with getting a good, good balance of work, um, lots of good stuff to put on your CV. You get lots of really great experience, but you also have a really good summer as well because you get tons of recreation time and you can. The island is your playground, you can do whatever you want on it, basically. Um, you'll be working with lots of skilled staff. We worked with about six members of staff at the conservation um, site, and they were all really good and skillful and helpful. And you also work with volunteers who like are, have the same mindset as you, and are there for the same reasons as you. Uh, next. So where is it exactly? It's just on this red pin here. Uh, it's just offshore from a town called Mersing, which is about five hours bus ride from KL and also from Singapore. So it's quite easy to fly into and travel across land by bus. The resort picks you up by boat and it's fairly accessible. Uh, the resort's called Batu Batu Resort, if you want to look that up. And, come in. and it's located on Pulau Tenga Island, which is just a stunning island, uh, one of the most beautiful islands I've ever seen. Uh, right, I'm going to invite Seb to come and kind of tell you a bit more about some of the project. Alright, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of the diving work that you're going to get up to there. So it's a really good opportunity to get experience in the scientific diving, which obviously a lot of the jobs that you're applying for want. And uh, so fish and coral ID training, so, so that you can take part in these diver transect surveys to monitor how the reef and biodiversity of the island is doing. You first get trained to recognize different fish and coral species of the island uh, over about a week. And then you get involved in these diver transect surveys where you're going to take video along a transect and, uh, and review it later to see whether there's been any change. Uh, underwater cleanups, which Ron will tell you a bit more about in a bit, uh, but mainly just clearing ghost nets and stuff like that off of the reef, which cause huge environmental impact. Coral nurseries, as you can see up there, they take PVC pipe and make a framework and then add coral nubs to, to grow them much faster than they would normally on reef. And uh, this is expanding, so when we were there we just started it and there was just one or two, but I'm sure they got lots and lots now. Reef mapping. So when we first got there, they hadn't mapped all of the reef on the island and uh, part of our work there was mapping the reef using a float line and GPS. Uh, now that that's all done, they have been given permission to go visit some of the neighboring islands and do the same there. So if you go, that's probably one of the activities that we'll be involved with. Uh, and overall, it is just really good for scientific diving experience and uh, a brilliant place to get it. And uh, I'm going to invite Robin up next. Oh no, sorry, Philip is going to tell you a bit about turtle hatchery. Um, so just on with the diving, it doesn't matter if you don't have any diving experience because we you can, I didn't have any, so you can get it once you're up. Um, with the turtle hatchery, so Tengarang Conservation used to be called Turtle Watch Camp, so this is kind of like the starting foundation of it. And basically, um, the island has a hatchery and what we do is we go around the island in the morning and we go to the other islands on the boat and we check to see if any turtles have um, hatched their nests there, and then we transport them back to the island and put them in our hatchery here. And the best thing about it is that when they do hatch, 
you get to take them out and measure a sample and weigh a sample, and then you get to watch them go out to the sea. Um, <clears throat> sometimes that happens at 2 a.m. in the morning, hence the red light in that picture there, but we all get up and go and uh, measure them and then let them out. Um, something they've added this year is research studies and hopefully some DNA samples as well. So they're hoping to collect some actual data that they can use for scientific information in the future. Hello, I'm Robin. I'm going to tell you a bit about the beach and underwater cleanups. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware as well just that plastic and rubbish in the ocean and beaches is a huge problem across the world, particularly in this part of the world. In 2018 alone, there was 10 tons of rubbish collected from the beaches of Tenga, which is a fairly small island, and that gives you an idea of the scale of the problem. So you'll be doing weekly beach cleanups, sometimes armed with machetes to cut up large, huge nets which are washed up on the beach and become entangled in the, the rocks. Uh, occasionally you'll be accompanied by guests, which is uh, one of the few net, few extra pairs of hands. It's good to raise awareness of the problem. For instance, that picture on the far right, in just one hour, on one beach, we've picked up over a thousand plastic stores, which is yeah, fairly staggering. Uh, on top of that, you'll also be doing underwater cleanups. The main part of this, as I mentioned, is you know, cleaning up ghost nets, which have a you know, very detrimental impact on the coral reefs. They become entangled, they stop light penetration, they trap fish and such. So that view from there, that took a team of divers you know, almost two hours to clear and get onto the boat. Quite a fun job, but it was yeah, hard work, but worth it. Um, yeah, so obviously, yeah, cleaning up from the beaches and picking up rubbish is obviously not the most exciting or glamorous part of it, but it is arguably one of the most rewarding parts of it when you see the beaches you know, after they've been cleared. And um, that goes back onto there. So, guys, I'm going to tell you a bit about some of the other tasks and other things that you're going to get on with when you're on the island. So, boat and island patrols. So during the mornings at about 7 a.m., maybe a bit earlier, depending on the tides, someone's going to go with uh, one, of the, uh, one of the staff on a boat to all the neighboring islands with a pair of binoculars and look for turtle tracks on the beach. And then someone else is also going to walk or run, if you choose, around the island to look for the same turtle tracks on the right of the island conservation talks. Now it's a really good opportunity to practice public speaking uh, about marine biology and stuff in an unmarked low pressure environment so I suggest get involved in that. They do sort of bi-weekly talks about sharks and turtles. Uh, tree nursery. So as you can see on the far right there we built it up when we were there and it's definitely developed a lot more since then but they're trying to get seedlings from all of the local uh, the native species of trees and plants and uh, grow them so that they can combat erosion on the island. Grubs. So this stands for Baited Remote Underwater Video Systems. So what they do is they have a big metal frame with a GoPro camera in it and then they stick some fish onto a pole in front of that and it allows them to monitor the more cryptic species or the more shy species such as the local sharks and uh, just to monitor them and see how they're doing. And that's sort of not so periodical, they just sort of will do that when they need a bit of data, but it's pretty fun. Beach monitoring, it's just like beach profiling that you've done uh, with Perry at Watt before, uh, but obviously a bit warmer and a bit less rainy. And uh, more terrestrial projects, so they have new projects that they're developing all the time. When we were there, they were trying to map all of the native species of tree and uh, in the forest. And they, yeah, they're just going to keep doing new projects the whole time. So you've got that to look forward to. So I'm going to hand you back to Charlie now. Hello. So obviously there's a lot of work that you do, but once that is done, you have a lot of recreational time as well. You'll get one day off a week, um, and you have your lunch break in the evening time. So one of the best um, activities you can do in your free time is fun diving. So um, if you want, you can grab some kit, and you can just pop off into the water and just have a wee um, explore around. There's an activity centre um, next to the dive centre which is on our side of the island where you can get snorkels, paddle boards, kayaks and you can just roam free around the island as well. Um, jetty jumping and sunbathing obviously are part of island life and socialising. So when you're there you are going to meet so many people from all over the world. You'll be interacting with lots of different people 
like-minded people as well. Um, it's a great way to network, great way to just meet people from all different walks of life, uh, but all coming together for the same reason. So your normal day, your uh, usual day, um, if you're up for morning patrol, it'll start at seven o'clock, that's not every morning, um, but if you are, you will be doing your boat or uh, walking patrols around the island. You'll then go for your um, breakfast and then a short meeting um, with the conservation coordinator who will tell you about your tasks that are gonna be done that day. So you'll have your first block of tasks in the morning, so from 10 to 12, and then you'll have a lunch break where, as I've said, you've got loads of different activities that you can do in that time. Then you'll move on to doing your three hour um, afternoon tasks. And once you finish that, it's off to dinner, uh, crack open a cold one, and then you can just chill out. There's occasionally some evening um, tasks that will be done um, if there is a nest that is due to hatch, you will be doing patrols throughout the night to make sure that you can catch that as it's hatching to release them. Um, other than that, that is your downtime and ready for the next day. So um, where you will be staying is called The Ranch. Um, it's a great place, um, very relaxed. It's on the other side of the island, as Matt said. So it's very private. It's, it is your own space. The guests don't go on to um, the ranch area. So we've got just sort of socialising, chill out areas, a kitchen, so if you don't want to go to the, the um, canteen, you can cook yourself. Um, as I've said, it's very private, but also um, when you're staying there, it is bunk bed rooms, so you will be sharing with potentially someone that you don't know, so you have to be okay with that. Um, there's garden area, hammock area, and then throughout our time there, we added little bits to the ranch, and apparently now they have a basketball court. So it wasn't there when we were there, unfortunately. but. Um, there's lots that you can add as well. So I'm gonna pass over to Philippa again to tell you the sort of details of money. Okay, so the pricing. Um, so the reason why we want to advertise it to you guys is we think this is a really good, affordable opportunity. Um, so the pricing is 5,000, let's say you should bring it for nine weeks, which is about 100 pounds a week, which is cheaper than living in Edinburgh. Um, that covers your food, your accommodation, everything you'll be doing when you're there. The only thing you'll have to pay for is your flights there, your coach from whatever airport you go to, to Mersing. The coach is like less than a tenner for quite a, like a few hours coach. Um, and then if you want to do a diving qualification whilst you're out there, then you can pay for that on top as well. You don't have to do one if you've already got one. Um, and the price for that is like the same as doing it in the UK anyway, the um, diving qualifications. So um, there's a couple of phases. We think this is probably the best one for Harriet Watt students. So you can go in July and come back just in time for your next academic year. Um, and uh, oh yeah, this is the staff. We probably have a um, Skype call with one of them at some point. And then we've also got our dive team here, which you'll be living with them as well. And then the two boat captains. <coughs> Right, so hopefully after hearing what you've just heard, that some of you will be interested in uh, applying. So I'm just going to talk to you how to do that. Uh, at the top here is the website. Um, <laughs> there is a little bit of confusion with the URL because it's still actually underneath the old name, which is Turtle Watch Camp. But they're the same website, so if you type that in, uh, you should see the website and it's got tons of more information there. Um, I've also put the website in the email I've got sent around. Um, other than that, if you want to apply, you have to email this address here, and you send them a CV and cover letter, basically just detailing why you want to apply. Uh, let them know that you came to the talk and that you uh, heard about it from us. Um, they do want to prioritize Harriet Watt students this year because uh, they enjoyed having us, I think. Um, we, they want biologists and people with a scientific background. Um, so yeah, email that address. Uh, you'll probably be sent an info pack, which will give you lots more information about the volunteering there and stuff. And if you're accepted, you'll get a Skype interview with one of the lovely staff that you saw on the previous slide. Um, other than that, uh, I have to just say, like, we all really had such a great time there, and we're not advertising this for any selfish reasons for the island or for us. It really is, like, there's no strings attached. That is the price. It's, like, one of the cheapest things we've found like off wall and other places always advertise and they're always like extortionate amounts of money. This is probably even better stuff you're getting to do and it's for like half the price. Um, yeah, so we were all very passionate about this so we'd love to hear if you have questions. That's their Instagram there as well if you want to give them a call. <laughs> yep. Um, 
So you can get um, boat trips, so they do go over to Mersing, so you can go and grab um, snacks and things like that, and um, yeah, toiletries and things. But there is a shop on the island, so they're not maybe doing that as much. But it's like, it is a small island, but there's lots of it to explore. And when you've got your own area, then the kind of hotel area where you're working, it does separate it up a little bit. And with your recreational time, then it, it does give you a wee bit more of a sense of freedom. But you will get to go to the mainland. That, that will happen, just not every single week, not as regularly. You'll get one day off every week. So, and you can save those up. So, if you wanted to go and like go to KL or something, do they not do that anymore? It's just one, yeah, once a week. Oh, right. you get okay. Yeah, you can save up for the day. I'd also say, like, so I was there for 10 weeks, and like, you would expect some of these volunteer places to have pretty like dingy accommodation, and like, you might not enjoy it because it's not like you lose the comforts of home. But I found actually the accommodation was pretty sick. Uh, the bunk beds were comfy, there was fans, and Kept you cool. There was really good food. We all got very well fed. Really I had a little bit too much to eat. Um, and yeah, I think it was quite comfortable. Like uh, they all speak English there, and it's all very. You don't feel like you're away from home, even though you're halfway across the world. So I would yeah. say it's fine. Yeah, the staff do become like family yeah. almost. Yeah. yeah. Is it only nine weeks that you can do? Like, can you go for less? Or? Um. So last year it didn't have a set time. You just had to go for more than a month. But I think because people were coming in staggered amounts, they wanted to train people up at the same time. I think there would be a little bit of flexibility possibly, but uh, I think nine weeks is probably the rough time that they want to come for in those spaces that were on the hard line. Because they have to train people up to yeah. be able to just go, go and do the tasks, so they don't want to have to keep doing that every single three weeks, because that kind of was what it was like for them. So for them it's a lot easier to have nine weeks, and for you, you get so much more out of it because you're given the opportunity to learn everything whilst you're there. Now, um, they're not doing that currently, but um, Tanya, who works out there, she was speaking of maybe like master's opportunities or PhD opportunities. So I would say like, um, are you third year now? Yeah. Yeah, I would say in terms of doing your um, honours project next year, we think, well, we, we were stuck within the Harriet Watt kind of bubble for that. I think that's worked well for us. But say if you really enjoy it out there and you've got to know the people working there, maybe want to have you back as a master's opportunity. We even discussed possible topics that um, you could do if you were doing a, a master's there or something. Definitely, if you're interested, definitely uh, email them and give it a go and see if they want to yeah. accommodate that. And obviously, yeah, you'd have to get it talked to your parent board and then uh, to the conservation team. But so they, are, they are quite new, so like relatively to all the other um, conservation things you'll have heard of. So there's loads of new stuff that they need to hear about to maybe implement into what they offer to people. Any other questions? Just to reiterate, like, you don't have to be doing marine biology to do this. Uh, it is all walks of the science and <laughs> things do it. Like last year they had people that were just traveling and came through and they were still really great volunteers, even though they didn't have scientific backgrounds. So if you show interest and you're passionate about it, then it should be all right. Um, you can have a really good time there. You do get trained really well. Like, just to do the sort of transects on the reef to identify fish, you got about it's like a week, two weeks yeah, of training, just like solidly. Like one on one, really, really you had a sheet for a with fish species, and they would tell you which ones were rich, and you got really good knowledge there. Because mm -hmm. we don't obviously get tropical information once we're in Scotland, so to go over there and have a bit of variety, and that was amazing as well. So, for any of you divers, Oh yeah, so when I went over there I didn't have a diving qualification, so like this year we've got like dive masters here and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I did it, so I spent my first week with the dive team there and they did just my open water and after that I did the exact same amount of diving as everyone else was. So it doesn't matter what you've got. Um, yeah, and if you're interested, literally I would just say apply and um, yeah. See, see, like from there, if you're still interested and stuff. But yeah, um, we're not we're not being paid to do this. Like we we just really think 
it's such a good opportunity and we want as many Harry Watt students to get involved as possible. You all get a t-shirt as well, if you do yeah. <laughs> really good, no, as you can true. tell. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if any of you've got any more questions, don't hesitate to come and ask yeah, us we'll or email us or anything. But other than that, I'd say yeah, thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for coming, guys. Yeah.